Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Raber, and I'm back with another Conversations With. And today, I'm going to be sitting with my friend Olaf Zaba. I hope I said that right. Perfect. Okay. And uh, Olaf uh, is uh, a passionate photographer himself, but he's probably best known, especially to uh, the photography aficionados who love medium format as the editor, publisher, CEO, and uh, general bottle washer for the medium format Digital Magazine, which is one of the very fine magazines uh, that uh, I get on a regular basis and probably one of the finest ones uh, out there uh, on a monthly basis. So uh, we'll have a little bit of fun today talking to Olaf and a little bit about his story and uh, photography and why he chose a magazine format and so forth. So uh, let's just dive right into it. Olaf, um, First off, let's tell me where you're located. I think you started, you're a Canadian, obviously, um, and I won't hold that against you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, especially because you guys are doing so well with the COVID up there, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's nice to see. But you started uh, and lived originally in, in the Calgary area, and then what happened? Yes, so great to be here, Kevin, with you. And um, yes, yeah, so. Um, First of all, I was born, as you can probably hear, my uh, beautiful accent, which I have been practicing all my life very hard. <laughs> and I'm better and better with this. Uh, so I was born in Poland. And about 22 uh, years ago, uh, I immigrated to Canada. Just to be more precise, I followed my love of my wife to Canada, which... Um, uh, at that at that point was very difficult decision for me, uh, but I don't regret it at all. And um, I feel Canadian. I love the country. I I feel at home. And of course, uh, by this move, I could be with my lovely wife Kasia. Uh, so uh, first, we actually came to Vancouver. That's where my wife's parents lived, and. Uh, after a few years, we tried to move. Well, we moved to Calgary. Uh, to uh, it's a very long story, but it didn't work for us for the for the health reasons. And at one point, we moved back to Vancouver. So right now, yes, we are in the beautiful British Columbia. First off, I love Calgary because first, it's the gateway to the Rockies, the Canadian Rockies. But I remember I was on a sales call there for phase one many years ago when I was a, a VP at phase one. And it was so cold there. I was afraid to slam the car door because I thought it would shatter. I, <laughs> my hotel room steamed up, windows steamed up, and there was like a half inch of ice on the interior of the hotel w windows from when I like closed the curtains. Uh, it got so cold and the, you know, the humidity and whatever the room was just turned ice on the windows. I mean, it was so cold. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I, actually, at one point, I think the lowest temperature in, in Calgary that I experienced myself was minus 55, okay? <laughs> and at that, at that temperature, like, you cannot even have anything exposed. Otherwise, you cannot even open the door. You, you are not able to even use your hands. So that was the lowest temperature. Although, although I have to say, that is slightly misleading because Vancouver has a very dry climate. So minus 25 is the same as in Vancouver minus five. Uh, yeah, because of the, because of the uh, humidity. Yeah. So anyway, so now you're in Vancouver and uh, uh, you, you weren't a photographer all your life, right? You, you, you were kind of doing something else for a while, correct? Uh, well, it's, that's correct, although one of the photos that I send you, Kevin, maybe you will share later on, but um, I don't know why, when I went to my archives as a child, uh, it was about a few years ago, uh, my, my, my parents had this entire box of photos as I was a child, and I was going through my photos, I found at least 10 images of me as a six, 10 year old boy running around with a camera. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. These, none of them worked. Yeah. These were all plastic toy cameras. And in fact, I had one camera when you press the button, the water was coming uh, <laughs> out of it. Yeah, so, yeah. and you know what? Answering your question, uh, my parents were not photographers. 
uh, I, I don't have anybody in my family that would be photographer, but somehow at this young age, uh, toy cameras were my favorite toy. Uh, having said that, um, I started serious adventure with photography many, many years ago. So I don't know what was going on back then. So you, did, you know, you ended up in medium format. Did when you started with your photography, uh, what kind of like camera systems did you operate with? Were they always a medium format, or were you into, you know, thirty-five millimeter? Or uh, I mean, how did it end up in medium format? Uh, well, that's that's another long story. Let me let me say this. I always. You know, when, when we are kids or teenagers, we always dream we want to have a GTR or Ferrari or Porsche, but we, most of us know we will never have it, okay? So that was my story with medium format, at least in early years. I always look at the images shot with medium format, and for me, I don't want to start this conversation because I know we can go into a dark corner. <laughs> uh, but for me, there was always something unique about these images. I cannot really describe it. That's not relevant. But I always thought like, oh gosh, uh, keep in mind that it was back in the time when the cheapest medium format camera was, if I remember correctly, Pentax. And it was about $12,000, okay? So that's, that's basically way more than my, uh, than my car, first car. So obviously it was illusion. However, with time, how I became photographer, I started to shoot with uh, like, like Canon Rebel, with, with basic Nikons, uh, not, nothing spectacular because I just couldn't afford great gear. Uh, you know, looking forward, many, many years, obviously I was upgrading my cameras. At one point, um, and that's, that's kind of another story, but I met, uh, I run a workshop actually, okay? I run a workshop and I had a client, uh, I had the client which we became friends, okay? And uh, we started to chat about photography almost on, on a weekly basis. I visited them in California and, uh, and, uh, it, it was really great, great kind of a friendship. One evening, one evening, my wife and I are sitting and watching one of these uh, ridiculously stupid series on Netflix and telephone rings, okay? So I went to pick up a telephone, it was evening, and that was the gentleman, his name was Bob. And he told me something along those lines, Olaf, I love your photography so much and uh, you mentioned to me that you always dream about medium format in one of the conversations we kind of talk about gear and I mentioned and he said I want to buy you a camera and, and oh I was gosh. just absolutely speechless. Oh, okay? I, I would be too for heaven's sake. Well I was like and to be honest with you, my answer to him was, you know what, I really appreciate, but I don't feel comfortable, you know, that that's not, you don't take presents for people for, for $10,000, okay? And I was absolutely, absolutely uh, flattered with such an offer, but I, I sort of refused it, but I got another phone call a few days later, and he said, listen, Olaf, you are not doing this for yourself. You are doing this for me, okay? Because I'm, I'm old, you know, I don't have as much stamina to travel the world and photograph. Why don't we do it together? You with my camera and you with your eye, okay? okay. And he convinced me and a uh, few months later, I had the brand new GFX 50S, uh, sponsored by this gentleman who unfortunately passed away last year. Oh, sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was, you know, much more important than camera and much more important than this gift was the fact that very often we, we listen to the news, Kevin, and we hear all the bad news around us. 
Sure. People are bad and, and, and the world is going worse and worse. But I keep saying, and this is only one story that I can share with you, because the, the second story is even better. But it really motivated me and gave me the impression that, you know, in the world, there's so many great, great people that actually want to help other people without absolutely any agenda. And this is fantastic. And that's why I'm sharing this story. Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I first off, two things. Um, I think in, in my experience, and I've worked with a lot of photographers over the nearly 50 years that I've been doing this, is that they're some of the most generous and kind, and um, they've got such great attitudes and good sense of humors. Um, it's probably why I've hung out in photography so much, is the, the number of friends I've made that are photographers and the, sh the joy we share, you know, when we're out doors or indoors just either talking photography or better yet you know taking pictures with our cameras and you know making final images and specifically even making prints so um I, there's something about the photography thing that just works when i do a workshop with 60 people on a ship and they come from 15 different countries all differences are put aside you know a couple years ago four four years ago actually we left for a trip to Antarctica, South Georgia and Antarctica on the day that President Trump was elected. And not to bring politics into it, but it was yeah. like, oh my God, we're getting on a ship. So, you know, we get on the ship and um, after about an hour or two, you know, sailing, uh, they have a captain's reception and, uh, you know, the captain comes and everybody drinks champagne and cheers. And the one guy raises his hand and goes, how long can we stay on this ship? Do we have enough food for four years? <laughs> and, you know, the whole place just broke out laughing. And, you know, so it was like, uh, you know, the differences are they all knew, they all couldn't believe what happened. And, you know, we promised that if anybody even mentioned a word, they had to put a dollar in a, a jar. And by the end of the trip, which was a 20 some odd day trip, there was enough dollars in the jar that we caught people on that we could all buy, you know, a big round of drinks for everybody on the very last night. So it was pretty funny. And, you know, the other thing that gets me into photography, especially medium format and why I probably enjoy medium format photography so much is I had an Uncle Rudy, you know, he's a New Yorker, Rudy, I mean, he's the greatest fun guy ever. And he had a Raleigh Flex. And, um, I remember he used to always shoot with it. And I never really quite got the whole idea of a camera where you had to bend over, you know, the viewfinder to look into it, you know, twin lens reflex kind of thing. But um, one day he, he, he took one of the pictures that uh, we did while we were out. And it was a picture of a, a tugboat with New York City as a background. And I remember holding it up to the light and it's, you know, a two and a quarter square image on film transparency. And then I was just awed by this. You know, it was just so gorgeous, so beautiful, and I still have that transparency. And every now and then I gotta get the loop out and just look at it and remember, you know, the sharpness and the detail and the clarity. And of course, that same thing is what I found when I went to work for phase one. And, you know, the kind of um, cameras and everything that uh, they were making at the time. And, you know, now to think that we're up to 150 megapixels, you know, just the, the defining quality of what medium format is all about, I think is just, incredible and i think that's where i want to turn it around to because you know this magazine uh, that you started it's uh, not a, a paper magazine mind you but it's a it's an e-magazine is so well done so you know how did you get into the magazine how did you decide how you were going to you know set the um uh, the boundaries and the levels of how you're going to do this. You obviously have a philosophy behind the magazine, not only in the, in the, the context that you, you, your articles come in, but the photography that goes with it and specifically the design and the layout. It's one of the nicest magazines out there to look at. It just has a great feel. So uh, let's go into that a little bit. You made a choice, you're doing photography, but like why in the world would you decide to, and of course people ask me the same thing, do something like this, you know, why did you do a website? You were doing okay. You didn't have to do a website. Just go take pictures. Obviously, we have a passion. How come you did this? 
that's a very good question. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, that that directly ties with my previous story, because we finished the story with me having this medium format camera. Okay, and uh, what I did, I went on Amazon.com, and I typed, I typed, digital medium format. Guess how many books I found on digital medium format? Not many. I don't think there's quite a few. Not, not many out there. Zero. I'm not kidding. It was about two years ago, so maybe there are one or two right now. I don't know. But zero. There were plenty of books about medium format film. Okay? But there was zero. So I have this camera that I dreamt about all my life as a, like, to have, and I have it. And I have actually a hard time finding content that would take me into this new world because I think we have to agree w w without arguing, you know, because people usually, usually uh, uh, put argument, oh, which one is better? 35, oh. video format, this. Um, it's not the right way to talk about it. No, it's not, but these that's, that's format, just typical. These formats are all different. It's like some people like trucks, some people like sport cars, okay? So, uh, so I wanted to learn how do I function with this new creative tool, and I couldn't. That's that. That's the first hint. The second hint, uh, it's the decision about medium format magazine came from my absolute love of the publishing world. Since I was a kid, my parents subscribed to every single magazine we could subscribe to. So our kitchen table was all surrounded by stacks of books and magazines. Uh -huh. And for me, the, um, you know, for me, the idea that you take photographs and you take editorials and put them together into cohesive product was something that, that I always wanted to do. Because it's much more difficult than people realize. Oh, yeah. It's almost like curating your own work. I could go out and shoot a nice photo and throw it on the internet. People will love it. Yep. But then when I have a, a group of images and I have to think what to do with them or arrange them within the book that would make visual and editorial sense, that's a totally different skill. And I was always like, attracted by it. So um, putting these two, two together, not enough resources about medium format, plus my love of publishing world, I put together a very small team at the beginning. Um, and I decided that I want to create uh, the, the magazine I would like to buy, okay? Which basically meant uh, one, one thing that I really dis despised about most of photography magazines, that when I bought them, there were, let's say, 100 pages. 70 pages were ads. Then another were sponsored articles. And there was maybe about 22 pages when you actually had the content. But the problem with content, not all of them, there were some great magazines, but most of them, the content was designed the way that when you open the page, everything was shouting at you. Like, 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 you know, you went to a busy place. You could not concentrate on photography or editorials because there was this flashy designs, sure. color all over the place. So, so you know what, you, you, you like to flip it very quickly, but, but your brain couldn't really focus what's important. So I said to myself, I didn't know if it would work, to be honest with you, Kevin. So I said, I'm going to create magazine that I would like to buy. Mm -hmm. So we focus on three things. So we focus on the quality of the content, which is a very long story, on design, which we actually hired full-time designer, and on editorials. Okay. Editorials not based on the idea that people will submit articles, but we will actually go source articles and 
my team, our English editor, our designer is actually actively working with our contributors to make sure the content they are creating is what we want in the magazine. So, yeah, so, so that's, that's the story of the magazine. I just created it for, for, for almost myself. That's what I wanted. And one big obstacle for the magazine, obviously, was because we decided to make it beautiful and clean. So we had to count on our subscribers. So we couldn't count on advertisers. And for obvious reasons, when you hire designer, when you hire editorial people, when you have a team of talented people, obviously there are costs. So I thought, so here's my proposition. If you want to support this project, let me know. If don't, well, I will just disappear. And I was so pleasantly surprised that there are people that appreciate this kind of content, this kind of uh, um, uh, visual sort of uh, uh, experience, clean and beautiful, that actually is supporting us and let us thrive. So I'm very happy about this. That's great. Now, you, this is the, your magazine's uh, how much U.S. dollars per month, which I think is it, it, what, what's the subscription rate? Okay, so so basically, per per month, like uh, for example, uh, we are running promotion right now. It's below ten dollars per issue. Okay. Uh, given the quality, what we represent. And 140, 120 pages every month, not even one ad. That's what you get. No, and I think that's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea you had. First off, you know, I'll vouch for the fact that, you know, I jumped on board when I, when I saw that it was coming, obviously, because I'm in the industry and have a, a medium format kind of uh, background. Um, but the, the quality of the publication and the commitment of you and your team to make a quality publication and also find what I consider to be some of the best, um, you know, photographers or contributors uh, for articles and, and the images that go with them. Uh, it's certainly worth the money per month for anybody that has a, a passion for photography. Um, there's, I think, three magazines out there that I would put on that level. Uh, obviously, the old, uh, magazine it's not really old but it's the one that's been around that i know the longest is is lens work and it's kind of funny you guys are only a stone throw away from each other up there in the, the northwest but um brooks jensen has done a, a magnificent job uh, with the lens work and he was one of the very first guys to to take the magazine digital as well as hard copy um and he saw the benefit of digital and where it was going and specifically the pdf format and uh, you know, was able to make what he would call an extended version of the Lenswork magazine in digital. And I get both, mainly because I still love that tactile feel. Uh, I'm all about the print, so you know, I still like to hold something, but I also like the fact that in one my iPad right here, um, if I turn that on, I've got all your medium format magazines. You know, you probably can't see it very well, but. I've got your whole library right here. I can refer back to any one of these issues that you made. And, you know, they're, they're beautiful issues. Let me just kind of see if we can pop one up here and, and go to one of the pages. But, you know, just the whole concept of the design and, and, what, and how you've done things is it's just, I mean, beautiful photography, magnificent layout, especially when you have the guts put one image per page, you know, where you can really highlight the image and, you know, you're not afraid that, you know, I've only got 96 pages on a press run and, you know, I've only got, I've got to put all these pictures in here that just start, you know, shrinking down the pictures and reducing the quality and so forth. The presentation design and everything that you've done here is top notch and you've been able to maintain that. So I presume you have a, a good audience. Um, and I think a lot of us, once we're in, you know, we're hooked, you know, so we continue um, staying in it. So. You know, by my, way, my hat is off to you, okay? Thank you um, so much, Kevin. By the way, if I can interrupt, you talk about press. We are right now testing the printed version of the magazine. So uh, 2021, Kevin, you will be getting medium format magazine in print. That's good. I mean, that's, you know, kind of fun. It's, um, 
our, our mutual friend, Tomas, um, he does Fuji uh, Love magazine, which is a really great magazine dedicated to, you know, the Fuji side of photography, um, both medium format and APS-C size. But he's also now started uh, another magazine, which is a four times a year magazine, and it's a printed magazine. I can't wait to get the first edition of that. We so there was what I consider the three top magazines that I enjoy every month. Well, is the Fuji Love magazine, obviously my lens work magazine, and um, you know medium format magazine. And you you've been able to leverage social media um, on Facebook and other ways too to help promote your magazine, correct? That, that's correct. So, so you know, idea is um, there is no magic there, Kevin. Uh, when we thought about our magazine, it was the quality of content, quality of content, and quality of content. So from time to time, we share from what we have inside the magazine. And, uh, and I guess that works. It works. It's, um, um, it, it's really, I keep telling the story but each month the, the the very second the issue goes out we start working on the next issue and um, let me give you an example next month we have uh, exclusive and quite extensive interview with michael kenna okay it nice, took great. us about a week of big fights arguments about which image and how in the layout is going to go on the cover. You cannot imagine dedication of, uh, of us. Uh, like my wife said that it's, it's not healthy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but, but, but that's what we love. That's sure. what we love. We love imagery and yep. we love design. And, and for us, every single corner of the magazine it's important because we want our uh, our readers to. I don't want really our readers to to drive to work in on the bus and just flip through it. That's not what this magazine is for. This magazine is Saturday evening. You prepare yourself uh, your favorite coffee or tea or beer. I don't know what's ever. Um, I drink it with a cocktail, to be honest with you. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> And you know what? And you go slowly, page by page, and immersing yourself in this experience. So the, the use of white space, the use of entire design is designed to you to just do that. We don't want people to flip oh, next, 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 next. I don't know. That's a, uh, you know, that's, and that's hard. You know, one of the things that I talk a lot about on my site and why I, I, I promote printing so much is yes. the fact that you know in in the society we have today especially with all these devices you know everything's swipe you know with instagram and so forth we can see great photography but we see it for two seconds and move on move on move on and you know with your magazine at least on the ipad and then i've got a the, the larger ipad which i really love looking at your magazine on so this you know this little version of the ipad stays with me all day long i can't run my life without it but i have the bigger version for editing and you know, doing other things with, and your magazine looks spectacular on that one. And the cool thing about the iPad with the way your magazine set up is if I put it in the book section, it synchronizes to all the, the devices. So, you know, if I'm looking at the uh, large iPad and I'm now getting on an airplane and I have my smaller iPad, I can pick right up where I left off on bookmarks and everything else and, you know, continue reading the magazine. And that's when I find I do a lot of my um, reading too, is specifically when you know, I'm in transportation mode and somebody else is driving, usually in an airplane, which hasn't happened a lot lately, so I'm a little behind. But I also have a nice reading area in the house where I have all my photography books. And, you know, I love sitting down there and either reading your magazine or looking at one of my new photography books, which I just ordered a new one, Greg Gorman's Retrospective. Oh, God, he's an amazing photographer. And so, you know, I really do enjoy and basically getting inspired by the work I see in the magazine you produced. So, um, you know, I highly recommend to my audience, and we just had an article a, a little while ago in uh, on PXL um, that I, I put together in regards to your magazine, and you, you also have offered a special offer. So uh, that'll be in the text of, of this article as well as the last article. Um, but I really kind of, 
you know, my, my hat's off to somebody like you that has dedicated, you know, their passion uh, to producing a fine product. Um, and I think it's a good value, an excellent value uh, for all of us that are, are just basically enamored by photography. So uh, just amazing stuff. And, you know, you're, you're, do, you're doing something with Edward Bertinsky, right? I, I, if I remember correctly, did you do an interview with him? Yes, actually, we are doing interview uh, in November, so so uh, it's going to be featured piece. And in fact, interviews uh, interviews is, has become quite of a hallmark of our magazine because we really put lots of attention to them. They are usually quite uh, extensive. We 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 have a team about of three people that work for a few days on each interview. First on questions, we do very extensive research because what we try to do is to ask questions. Some obviously we have to ask regardless to introduce a photographer to our audience. Although I don't think Edward Bertinsky or Michael Kenna require introduction. No, no. <laughs> but, uh, but, but we do lots of research just to make sure we go, uh, in some new avenues with them. So, so those interviews are, are very, very important to us. The same with the selection of imagery. We work with a photographer, we interview and our team together to actually choose imagery for each interview. So I'm very excited uh, uh, for uh, the upcoming interview with Michael uh, Kenna. And uh, and Edward Bertinsky, of course, we have more coming up, sure. but but well, I can't spill all my beans. You know? No, don't spill all your beans. But you know, you'll I I spent a day with Edward Bertinsky a, a few years ago and did a big video on, on him. Uh, it was funny. I've always wanted. I met him when I was with Phase One, and you know, he was getting into medium format. And then you know, with uh, at that other site I was at, uh, all my readers know where that is. Um, I did an extensive um, multi-video part uh, interview with Edward, and I just love his photography. He's, he was like, um, you know, meeting your hero because of all the environmental um, articles and photography that he's done. And he was getting into and showed us while we were there in that um, that video uh, 3D printing. So he was starting to do the whole process, uh, and you should inquire about that of how he does his 3D photographs, basically 3D printing is just an amazing concept. And to see it in, in reality on a table, you can see, you know, when we're together, we're just kind of bending over looking at this uh, pile of elephant tusks. He's an amazing individual and very, very committed to, you know, the planet and, you know, the stories of the planet and what man has done with the planet. And it was fun too, because while we were there, Sebastian Sagato was in town and opening up a gallery show a block away in Toronto. And, um, you know, got to, to, to meet him and see that exhibit. And it's just absolutely stunning. And it's amazing, those kind of photographies. And, you know, I think you'll find the same with Michael McKenna. They're, these are great guys. And it, it's cool that you're doing these projects and uh, that you can immortalize, you know, what these guys are all about because they're so committed. Much like you are, not only... You know, that they're committed in the photography sense of things, but what you are in regards to the magazine and sharing that with a, a large audience. So um, it's, it's pretty cool. And uh, one of the other things I might say here, um, for all my readers that haven't experienced medium format that are interested, obviously there's a discount code you can get, but consider looking at some of the, and, and, and picking up all the issues while you can. You'll have a huge library of, of beautiful photography and articles that you can read. And I don't want to sound like, you know, the medicine man and selling you know, <laughs> the, all the stuff here, but it's what you've, what you've produced, your body of work is really nice. And you've done something extra, too. You've got a PDF side of things. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, so uh, on occasion, we produce some kind of extra, uh, extra sort of, it's, it's, I would call it mini magazine. We call it PDF exclusives. So these are a very short, about 50 pages, mini magazines produced by one photographer, okay? So, so one photographer shares with us sometimes philosophy, sometimes story behind the images, uh, 
and, and people really enjoy it. I have to admit that in recent months, we have incorporated this idea more and more into the magazine for the sake of simplicity. Sure. Uh, but, but I'm pretty sure that people will find our PDF exclusives quite, uh, quite interesting. And that's part of the subscription anyway. It was part Absolutely. of the subscription. It's, 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 th there is one price for everything, no tricks. So basically, you can subscribe on a monthly basis or subscribe per year, and you get everything. There's nothing else out there. That's good. So let me say this kind of close on this part because I want to talk about something else with you. Um, you know, definitely take a look at this uh, magazine. Uh, let's, uh, it's funny, we still call it magazines, although it's not like a magazine. It's a, an e-magazine or an e-publication. Bottom line is it's a beautiful publication and it presents well on, you know, your mobile devices such as an iPad and uh, even a computer if that's how you're still looking at your, your material. And I highly, highly recommend that uh, you take advantage, get over to mediumformat.com and take a look and subscribe, simple as that. Uh, you won't be disappointed for the, the price per month. Uh, don't forget, you have to also contribute to Photo PXL because we could use your help too since we're a contribution type of site, but that would be uh, really good. Now, all, all of what I would like to do is, is kind of switch it over to, obviously you're, you're doing this magazine and everything, and that's your passion, but you're also quite a photographer. Um, and you have one of the things that I admire, and I don't. Maybe I have to do a story about you in more detail about your art because probably <laughs> publishing it on your own might not be the the best thing to do that way. In the sense that people are going to look at, oh, he's just publishing his own work. But your photography is excellent, and you've got quite a style. Um, uh, I know I've seen some of your work that you've done from the Palouse, but you know you you, you have. Um, I don't even know how to define it, but it is definable as a style. Tell me about your photography and, and um, how you've developed it and how you continue to see, because I think your vision is, is quite nice and quite stunning. We'll put some photographs in uh, on this video here, maybe you, yeah, so that uh, people can see this and, and get an idea of what your work looks like. Yeah, so I think you, you made a very good point, Kevin. And I have to admit that the, the, always the toughest question that people ask me because I cannot say I'm a landscape photographer. I cannot really say I'm a street photographer. So I really don't know who I am because when I try to define <laughs> myself, yeah. landscape people were angry at me, travel people were angry at me, street people were angry at me. So I felt like, oh gosh, so who I am? I, I don't know, but maybe it comes from the fact that I started as a, a landscape photographer and I love landscape photography. But, but somehow after a while, I decided to try something else. So I shifted, you can call it travel photography, so which sometimes includes landscape. But again, that brought me to a new place, which I guess we can define it as a street photography. But that, but that also kind of passed. And then I started... Uh, you know, I really hate to use the word creative because it's so overused everywhere. And um, so basically what I started to do is combining different worlds of photography. So uh, you can, you can in some of my photographs, you can see a portrait, street, and even some travel. So, um, uh, you know, what, one of my clients on one of my workshops said, you know, all of watching you how you should reminds me a little bit poetry. So you arrange the elements within the frame the way that it somehow works, but it's hard to say what the hell is this, okay? Yeah, it's kind of almost a graphical look. I don't, you'll see it obviously in the photographs that are accompanying this video, but you know, you, you've, you've got a style um, and it's, it's quite interesting that way. Um, so, I'm always afraid the word graphical because, because I know some, I can understand it, but it defines it. Yeah, because people say, "Oh, you did it in Photoshop." No, I did it in front of people when I do workshops, and I shoot in front of my students because sometimes they ask me to show the idea. Sure, I show them photos like, "Oh, right now I believe you," <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because I think we. Uh, we are often so defined by some genres 
that we are afraid to go beyond and break those borders with it, uh, between them. Yep. And um, I have to I have to say that in, I enjoy whether it's when we travel by car, which we absolutely love doing road trips, or shoot in London or New York. Um, I guess one idea about my image is that I really cherish that, that everybody asks me, where did you take it? Because they are hard to define unless, of course, there's some kind of aspect, like let's say the, the telephone booth in London. That's sure, kind of sure. easy to figure out. But basically answering your question, especially in recent uh, last year, because this year, as we both know, is really tough. I have been trying to, 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 to experiment even more. And when you experiment, obviously you fail most of the time. And that's a normal. I just fell in love with failing in my photography. Of course, nobody sees my failings, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but that goes back actually to the topic that we discussed earlier is curation. I love curating my work. And, and this is a big part of my photography as I, uh, as I do. Yeah, your audience even needs to understand that you know, you've got a body of work and a style that actually kind of lends a lot of credibility to uh, what you're doing with your magazine. And, and you know, it, it reflects both directions. Your photography is defined, well executed, um, and your, your magazine kind of carries forth the same way. Um, it must be a core value that uh, your parents or somebody instilled in you at an early age because it, it certainly comes through with everything that you do. Well, thank you, Kevin. You are very kind today. Uh, today? Oh, my, no way. In the past, I wasn't. <laughs> that you are so far away because we could, you know, I don't know, have a drink or something. Uh, someday, <laughs> someday when this COVID stuff is all over, you know, we'll go out and shoot. And, you know, it's as I do with a lot of my friends when we photograph together, um, you know, it's kind of different. We learn a little bit from each other, see a little bit differently. I mean, a lot of times I love photographing just by myself because to me sometimes that's a, a very personal experience. And unlike yourself, I don't have a particular style. I practice a lot of different styles. Um, you know, whether I'm photographing close-ups and abstracts of ice or, you know, the, the graphics of a forest or, you know, um, the simplicity of a landscape. I mean, you know, uh, we all find our happiness, I think, somewhere in... Uh, how we take that picture and you got to admit uh, correct me if if i'm wrong but you know there's like multiple parts of uh photography it's that ah, i see that two you know the setup three the satisfaction of that shutter clicking when you've caught it and four when you get back and you take a look at it and you can finesse it and then finally for me it's when you can hold it and uh, I think those are uh, the, that, that kind of process that I just love in photography. And it, it's too, too bad that many photographers buy tons and thousands of dollars of equipment and never get to that last step. And you know, there's one thing I'm an advocate of, it's making prints. I make prints like, you know, God, I'm, there are boxes all over the house here. I'm very big on that. Someday I'm gonna die. At least people have boxes of prints they can look at or something. Who knows? But, um, you know, I'd love to photograph with you sometime. I think that would be a blast. And I'm sure that uh, sometime in the next year or so, once things settle down, is we'll get out there and do it. The, the same here, Kevin. That would be wonderful. Absolutely. So, so uh, I'm just right away inviting you to Vancouver. Okay? <laughs> All right. Love Vancouver. There's a couple other very talented photographers there. Sharon Tenenbaum and a few others. And then on Vancouver Island, you got uh, Mr. Friedman, who, who just does trees and does an excellent job of that. So you, you're in you're in a good photo spot out there. Which you know, I'm in I'm in Indianapolis. There's there's not a lot of photographers here that are, are doing things like you know I see in some of these major cities. So you know I'm glad you mentioned you mentioned Stephen because Stephen plays such a big role in that. You know we we, we talk about me, but as I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation. Uh, you know, it's it's team's work. It's just not only me, and I'm very proud of the team. And and, uh, and basically, Stephen plays huge role in sourcing and 
and, and discussing about the content that we are featuring. So, so including Sally, who is our English editor, she also plays a huge part in, 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 in curation of our magazine. So as I mentioned earlier to you, some months we have a very, very intense conversations, what would go inside the magazine and also what we would not feature. Because that's, I think, important, not only in terms of magazine, but, but as, as we both know, Kevin, our own photography. Because there is stuff that we decide to engage our audience with. And there are some photographs or projects that we uh, somehow think, okay, that, that should never see uh, light of the day. <laughs> yeah, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's photographs that I, I, I find that are no, nobody will ever look at that they're sort of mine that I can enjoy. You know, they might be my cat and my dog, but, you know, photography brings a great joy in that sense in, in many, many ways. So it's kind of cool. Um, and, and it's good that you know Steve. Steve and I bump into each other all over the, the planet, uh, whether it be Japan or out west and different places like that. And, uh, you know, photographed a little bit together. But um, it's always fun to bump into him. And he's always sending me text messages of steak dinners and, and, and locations. So as you build up all your friendships along the way, maybe we should be exchanging things once in a while by instant message. It's like, oh, well, here I am and here's what I'm doing. And hey, by the way, I'm actually in Hokkaido also. So, you know, it's kind of funny that sometimes you don't even know it, but you're a mile away from each other in some remote corner of the world, like, you know, when we were in Japan and so forth. So it's pretty cool. God, it's just great to be a photographer. I don't think there's anything better we could be, you know? No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a fantastic adventure. And, and you, you are so right, Kevin, that people I met through photography and friendships, which, which are really for life, you know? Oh, yeah. Nothing will break them. Politics, health, nothing, okay? Yep. So, <laughs> so, so this is the most amazing story of photography, which which quite often I don't think we, we even talk enough about this because uh, it's, it's, I cherish this deeply with me. And um, yeah. That's cool. Well, look, you know, we could talk forever. I think the, the next time we talk, hopefully we can do this in a live fashion yes. uh, with drinks in our hands, sitting around a roaring fire in a beautiful lodge on top of a mountain with beautiful trees and color around us. Uh, I'm trying to fantasize a little bit now, but you know, we'll, we'll get that opportunity to do that. And um, you know, I really appreciate you uh, spending the time with me this afternoon and uh, having a chance to talk to you, obviously because I, I've enjoyed your publication for so long and uh, we've had many conversations together uh, on a number of occasions, but uh, you're in a class by yourself. You're doing something amazing that, uh, more photographers should get involved with and, and take a look at. And uh, you know, my hat's off to you. You make a marvelous publication. I have all your copies in my iPad, and uh, I constantly go back and look at them and get inspired. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, your idea to start this magazine probably came from a tiny spark that turned into a flame and then turned into a fire, and now it's what you do. So, um, to my readers, check it out. Check the, the offer that Olaf has made as a, a small discount uh, to all of you so you can try out this publication. And I can assure you, uh, you know, that you like it. And, you know, look, if you don't, just unsubscribe and move on. But I don't think you'll be doing that. Uh, it's, it's, I haven't done it. And uh, I'm watching my money these days. Uh, there are priorities. <laughs> I appreciate it. And, and you know, since... Uh, since we are exchanging nice things, I have to say that I'm, I, I also admire your drive because, you know, like, oh gosh, like sometimes you read about Kevin, it's like, is it the same guy? Is this the guy that started all of it? <laughs> so so, so uh, my hats to you as well, because you, you did so many amazing projects and uh, I don't know even one person in the photography world that wouldn't know about Kevin and all his you know, from, from your early project right now to the photo PXL. And, you know, I'm really scared to think, you know, because if I know you, there will be so many more. <laughs> well, you know, look, I like paying it forward. There was a lot of people that were very kind to me um, early on. And um, through their help, I was able to become a successful photographer. And, 
I moved around in the industry from the studios, the color lab to, you know, working in a camera company and, you know, now back out to doing photography and sharing my passion with others. And, you know, that's what PXL is all about. That's what your medium format uh, publication is all about. Uh, there's, it feels good to give. And um, it also it feels good to give something that you love, you know, to the bottom of your heart and something that I've done all my life. Um, I read so often about people getting burnt out. Um, oh God, I'm just burnt out. I can't do any more photography. I've been at this since I was 12 years old, making a living at it since I was about 19. Uh, literally, I mean, you know, if you knew my history, when I started, I had opened up my first studio when I was 19 years old. I have yet to burn out. I've had moments of bad periods and, uh, you know, getting knocked down a few pegs here and there. And, uh, but somehow or rather, I've always just managed to get myself back up and, you know, keep going. And my photography has matured and changed. And the amount of lovely people that I've met in this business, including yourself, just makes me want to do this every single day. I wish there were more hours in the day, to be honest with you. So, Olaf, thank you. Thank your team for me. You got a good team behind you. Um, you know, they're all obviously very dedicated and they follow your leadership and uh, your direction well. And I know a lot of people that have been in your magazines and featured in your magazines that just love what you're doing. And, um, you know, you, you formed a nice community. So my hat is off to you. Thank you. To my readers, thank you all for hanging in there with us. And um, I appreciate all of your support. Don't forget, you can contribute to help us do better and more of these kind of things in regards to uh, the site. We have some pretty exciting things coming your way over the next uh, three months. So uh, look for those on the site as they, they come. And I really appreciate it for all of you listening and watching on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel because that helps us a lot. And uh, you can kind of tap that little bell there and uh, get notified when we put new videos up. We're doing a whole bunch of different things. And the conversations with is just one of them. So Olaf, thank you very much. And thank you to all my readers. Take care.